Hello, everybody. Somebody requested a quick recap of today's discussion about continuity and discontinuity. So we were trying to find a definition for what it means for a function to be continuous. So we started by looking at some examples of discontinuities. And we decided that kind of informally, our idea about a discontinuity was a place where the graph was broken. So here, there's a break because the value of f at 2 isn't defined. Here, the value of f at 2 is defined. It's 1. But the left piece sort of comes apart from the right piece. Um, and this is an example where the function f would be continuous at x equals 2 because all the parts come together. So that was our aim, is to try and be a little bit more precise about what we mean when we say all the parts are coming together. Um, and then a little bit more precise about what we mean by the parts. <laughs> so if we want to say that f of x is continuous at a particular point, so if we want to say our function is continuous at 2, um, we know informally that means that there's no break at x equals 2. But that actually turns out to mean three separate things. The first thing is the function actually has to be defined at that value. So in our example here, f of 2 equals 1. Then we also said that if you look at the part of the graph that's just to the left of our value and the part of the graph that's just to the right, those two pieces have to come together. So let's write those two conditions a little bit informally. And then we talked about limits as a way of formalizing that idea. So as the x values approach the point that we're interested in from the left side, so if I'm starting here and getting closer and closer to 2, then the f of x values, that's the y values, are going to get closer and closer to the point that's defined for the function at two, x equals 2. So in other words, uh, as, I'm getting as x gets closer to 2 on this side, the y values are approaching this point. And then the same thing has to be true on the other side. As the x values are getting closer to 2 from this side, the y values also have to be getting closer to this point. We found that it was a little bit difficult to talk clearly in phrases like this. As the x values are getting closer to 2, the y values are getting closer to something. Um, so mathematicians invented a notation to summarize this idea called limit notation. So let's look at that. So let's say this is what our function looked like. If I wanted to talk about the y value that I'm getting closer and closer to as x approaches 2 from the left-hand side, I can ignore the entire rest of the graph and only look at what are the y values as I'm approaching 2 from the one side. So it looks like my y values are getting closer and closer and closer to 1. So the way you'd write that is you'd say the limit of f of x, because f of x is the notation that describes the y value for this function. So the limit of the y values as x is approaching 2, and then that minus sign means from the left-hand side, is equal to 1. So again, the way that you would uh, describe this in words is the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left hand side is equal to 1. And the idea is you're describing where the y values are headed toward as your x values move in a particular direction. Um, notice that this, is, this limit has nothing to do with the actual value of the function at x equals 2. Because if we want to know what is the value of the function at 2, the answer is 2. It's this point right here. So limit is only the limit of a function is only about where the y values are headed toward. It has nothing to do with what happens when you actually get there. Let's look at the other side. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the positive side, that would be this side, is equal to 3. Because if I think about being over here and I'm walking that direction, my y values are approaching 3. And again, it doesn't matter what actually happens when I reach x equals 2 because it's about where the y value is headed. So with this notation behind us, that gives us a very short way of defining what it means for a function to be continuous at a point. So we said f of x in this example is continuous at x equals 2 for three reasons. Informally, it's because all three pieces of the graph come together. We've got the point at the value, and we've got the left side and the right side. But formally, we would say that f of 2 
which is 1, is the same as the y value that we're approaching from the left-hand side. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left. And that is the same as the y value that we're approaching from the right-hand side. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right-hand side. So this very concise statement is making three different claims. It's saying that this point exists and that it's the same as the limit on both sides, which is all, of course, just a fancy way of saying all three pieces of the graph come together. This also gives us language for explaining why certain discontinuities are happening. So in this graph, I would say f of x has a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. And if you were asked the reason, the reason is because f of 2 isn't defined. And that's one of the necessary conditions that's part of the definition of being continuous. For this example, I could say f of x has a jump discontinuity at x equals 2 because the y value that I'm approaching from the left-hand side isn't the same as the value of the function at that point. So in other words, the left-hand piece isn't coming together with the value of the function at x equals 2. Um, but notice that I didn't have to explain it with long, imprecise sentences. This single short mathematical statement captures the idea very precisely that the left-hand side isn't matching up with the value at x equals 2. Warning! The idea of approaching that we used uh, to describe what a limit is, that idea isn't as obvious as it seems like it is. And when you get to calculus, you're going to need to make that definition even more precise. In other words, you're going to need to come up with a more formal definition of what a limit actually is. Um, but I'll leave that to calculus. Finally, we only defined what it means for a function to be continuous at a particular x value. Maybe we want to ask, what does it mean for a function to be continuous on a larger interval? We'll just define that f is continuous on the open interval a, b if it's continuous at every single point inside that interval. And now we have a working definition for continuity over larger intervals. OK, I hope that was helpful.